Welcome to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'm excited to announce that my Patreon is finally live and now you can enjoy exclusive content before it's released on YouTube for just $2 a month. You can find the link in the description or comments. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Legend of Sasuke, Part 1. Tenth Day, Month of the Monkey, Year of the Horse of the Seventh Cycle of the Hidden Villages Era. Somewhere in the province of Kentani, land of fire the body burned with black fire, from which there was no escape, even the chakra did not help, ending too quickly. On the day I fought Itachi, my older brother also used the Amaterasu technique, and I naively believed that I missed death only by replacing my body, shedding my charred skin like a snake. Just now. Now I understand that Itachi spared me and substitution will not help. It consumes too much chakra, and the advantage in battle, despite our numerical superiority, was far from ours. I ran out of steam too quickly, all attacks were blocked, and I was caught. So stupid. Saw ASKEE. -E. I heard a scream through the din in my head. They were running towards me from both sides. Naruto performed some toad fuinjutsu and sealed the black fire into a giant scroll. Sakura pulled me out of the tree's grip. Now, now, Sasuke, I'll help, she whispered feverishly pouring medical chakra into me. The noise of battle bubbled in my ears. There was a distant sensation of burning and blood in my mouth. I heard screams and characteristic sounds. Other shinobi were dying around us. All in order to defend this piece of land on which Sakura treated me to no avail, first turning off the pain, because I no longer felt the skin burning and bursting. Take care of your chakra, I wanted to say, but all that came out was wheezing and hissing. Therefore, he simply stopped her touching her stained cheek with his remaining hand, catching a single tear. Three minutes ago, before my last not very successful attack, when my reserve was almost full, I left a benchmark for the Izanagi technique, and it seems that my foresight was not superfluous. The first time I encountered this jutsu was when I killed Danzo, the old fart who gave my older brother the order to kill our entire clan. Uchiha clan. In exchange, Danzo promised Itachi to save my life, and he himself acquired a large number of Sharingans, he implanted them in all places, and not just in his eye sockets. The Sharingan is truly the great dojutsu of the descendants of the Rakuto Senin, the special eyes are the improved genome of our clan, of which almost nothing remains. Even at the initial stage of development, the Sharingan allows you to use illusions and accelerate the perception of reality, read lips, remember and analyze tons of information, calculating the moves of opponents, and in the final stage, create techniques inaccessible to other shinobi. Black fire, Amaterasu, which cannot be extinguished by anything, Tsukiyomi, the most powerful genjutsu. Kamui, a teleportation technique, Suzano, a technique of almost absolute protection, and many others, tied to the individual characteristics of the Sharingan. My older brother was a very strong shinobi, the genius of the clan, at 13 he was able to develop his Sharingan to the fourth stage, Mangekyo, I was 8 when he carried out that order, and 16 when I killed my older brother, burning with hatred and considering him a soulless monster. And then my eyes were literally, opened, to the situation with the Uchiha clan, and my Sharingan also evolved. When I finally found out the whole truth about my brother and the death of my clan, Danzo showed me another facet of the power of the Sharingan, the Izanagi technique. Incredible control of illusion and reality. A special genjutsu that can make both one's own death and the deaths of others appear as an illusion. However, the price of using the technique is a permanently closed Sharingan. Danzo acquired many Sharingans from the Uchiha clan, he exchanged them for his miserable life, without counting. I had to kill him more than a dozen times. Danzo was not a blood carrier, and his Sharingan was the third stage, so the duration of his Izanagi illusion was 60 seconds. I felt that with the eternal Mangekyu, my time to activate Izanagi was running out and would last for another half a minute at most. Although at first I hesitated which side to choose in this war of destruction, and clearly chose the side of the losers, there was no regret. Only relief that I could save my friends and everyone else, sacrificing just my sight. My brother Itachi, resurrected by the technique of an enemy who, even after death, managed to overcome submission, showed the last secret of the Sharingan. Izanami and at the same time he set my mind straight, forcing me to remember what is really dear to me. Sasuke. Naruto's cry blurred in my ears as I rushed towards my target and activated Izanagi in my right Sharingan, 
paying tribute to the god of existence and feeling how the world was becoming an illusion. Asterisk something was wrong. Of course, I had never used this forbidden technique and could not study it from the inside out of curiosity, but I saw how others used it, and was able to glean something for myself from the information Itachi conveyed to me. Nothing like this should have happened. It seems that after my death, which I cancelled, a biju bomb hit our people, and this is another reason to rejoice at our foresight. I could resurrect everyone. Undo their deaths. But when I found myself in a pre-stored benchmark measuring the beginning of the return, I was unable to break through my own illusion. On the battlefield, all the participants in the battle froze, and a strange greenish glow covered everything around. It was as if. The world was disappearing. Peering with my remaining eye, I noticed that the epicenter of this glow was coming from. Naruto. From my best friend, who was the bearer of a biju demon from birth, you can expect all sorts of surprises, but this. It actually looked creepy. Icy goosebumps ran along my spine, and I felt that I, too, was about to be swept away by a strange and indifferent element. For now, she was restrained by Izanagi's chakra and allotted time, but most likely, as soon as I get to the moment of my death, I will disappear along with everyone else. It seems that Uzumaki or his biju have completely gone crazy. Or. They saw no other way out. Crap. 10 seconds. What to do? Think. 9. What if you try to use Kamui? 8. The technique of ordinary teleportation with the help of Mangekio was not given to me, I only saw how they do it. 6. But what if we use the same principle as with Izanami or Izanagi? That special send of chakra to the eyes, because of which the Sharingan was closed forever, but. 4. Instead, the almost impossible was accomplished. 3. Taking into account the simultaneous use of Izanagi, it is possible that I will even be transported back in time and I will have time to stop Naruto. 2. It seems that I accidentally discovered the last facet of the Sharingan, and if I survive, I will definitely call it something pathetic. 1. Asterisk there was darkness all around, which it seemed like we had to get used to. I felt tired and empty, but I was definitely alive. I was surrounded by a strange smell of burning, oil and iron. And also measured sounds, a slight hum and some kind of incomprehensible sensation. It's as if, there's no real land beneath me and I'm floating in a giant iron box coated with bitumen so I don't drown. Warm. The air is even a bit dry. I'm covered with a blanket and lying on what looks like a thick futon, and its position strangely woven to Tommy. Not tied up, but when I tried to move, my body responded with dull pain. There is almost no chakra, but judging by the sensations, this is some kind of closed room, not too large. Sounds. Loud steps, as if someone was stomping on purpose. And the steps are quieter, soft. As if behind the wall of the room where I am. Silence, muffled conversation and a characteristic grinding sound. Apparently the door is metal and locked. It seems I got excited about not being captured. However, the thoughts instantly disappeared, because through the film of the eyelids it brightened, it was as if I was just in the dark and someone brought a candle. My heart skipped a beat from excitement. I have already come to terms with blindness, but feeling the world not only with the help of chakra and the four remaining senses, but also seeing with my eyes as an incomparable happiness. Taking a deep breath and smelling the subtle scent of herbs from the man who entered, I risked opening my eyes. I see. Biju grabbed my leg. I see. It may not be as good as before, but it looks like I got normal eyes. I'm glad you came to your senses, Prince Zuko, the man who entered, who turned out to be a fat old man with a huge bald spot and a funny grey beard sticking out in all directions, bent over me with a smile. What? What did he call me? Commentary on Prologue Reader Fan Art. Web links equals 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 part 1. Chapter 1. Many questions equals 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 it is not clear what day, month and year, it is not known where, apparently, the meeting with the avatar was not in vain for you. Prince Zuko, the old man sighed, straightening my blanket. Meeting with whom? The old man seemed to speak an understandable language, but I had the feeling that I was involved only on pretexts. I don't remember him, he calls me a strange name, but it seems that he is entrusted with taking care of me. He does it naturally and sincerely. He's wearing strange clothes, but I'll figure that out later. However, the old man had quite a decent reserve, so he was definitely a shinobi, although not in very good shape. Maybe he's from some clan like the Akamichi, who can turn their fat into chakra and have body enlargement techniques. Overcoming weakness, 
I sat up and looked around the room. The wall material is very strange. What is this, iron? So much. I examined flat sheets fastened together with something vaguely resembling nails. I saw something like this only in the land of snow, they bought coal from us and mined iron from us, built cars and made various useful things. Refrigerators, CCTV cameras, TVs to watch footage, intercoms, special stoves and special cylinders filled with something flammable to cook food. Insanely expensive, but many shinobi could afford it. Konoha had electricity and water, heating tanks from Kazahana. It looks like something similar here. Strange reddish lamps on the iron walls, some kind of pipes. Doesn't fit with living space. Even in Orochimaru's hideout it's somehow more pleasant. Maybe it's still a prison? We met the avatar we've been looking for for a long time, the old man began to say, distracting me from examining the scanty sights. The two wide twin swords on the wall were clearly not hanging for beauty, at least as training weapons. It is unlikely that if I had been captured, they would have left me the swords. Avatar. The old man stroked his beard thoughtfully. The sailors said it was a child. Boy. The last airbender. You captured him, Prince Zuko, and brought him to the ship, wanting to please your father. But the avatar escaped, moreover. During the fight with him, the sailors said that the avatar's eyes glowed and he became much stronger. I suspect that this was the avatar state, described by our predecessors. He almost destroyed our ship. And you. He grabbed you and threw you into the water. You almost died, Prince Zuko. Fortunately, our people were able to save you. Now we are sailing to the port. The ship needs repairs. Yes. I don't like this at all. The only thing that became clearer was that, it seems, my feelings were not lying and this heap of iron is a ship that sails on the water. How does he not drown? And how huge is it if it has such rooms? Okay, it doesn't matter. The old man spoke about my father, who would rejoice at the capture of some strong child. What did my Sharingan do? I want to look at myself. I'm not sure that there will be a mirror on this strange ship, but I think it will be possible to look overboard. The old man opened the iron door with a round lock that looked like a valve, gave an order, and after some time a strange samurai in reddish armor with a white visor mask brought an oval mirror. It seems that the old man gives orders on this ship for a reason. And he didn't misspeak when he said, our people. Some kind of commander or military leader. Although nothing seems to indicate this. No John in vest, no protector, no armor or sword like a samurai. There don't even seem to be any weapons. But Orochimaru didn't wear anything like that either, so anything is possible. Here, Prince Zuko, the old man sat down on his knees next to me and handed me a mirror. Did the avatar do this? I touched the burn on the left side of my face. This is why the eyelid seems to open worse. I looked at me, except that the iris was not dark, but yellow, this burn, which for some reason was not cured, although new eyes were implanted. I was also bald. Almost. A tail hung from the very top of his head. What a horror. No. The old man looked at me with a strange expression. This. Was done by your father, the Fire Lord, Ozai. I got chills. Putting down the mirror. I carefully looked at my hands. Similar, but not the same. Same size, calluses from the sword. But I had a small scar on my palm. I accidentally cut myself on a kanai as a child. And also small spots from the use of lightning techniques. Here, too, small burns are noticeable on the hands, but slightly different. Not from lightning, from fire. And the shape of the nails. Not mine. At first I didn't even understand. But it seems that this body is not mine. Although they seem to be the same age, with a similar face shape and eye shape, very similar. But that's not me. Not Uchiha Sasuke, but some Prince Zuko. Strange surname and strange name. Sharingan. That technique has no name. It seems she moved me into someone else's body. Fire Lord? Who is this? Daimyo or Hokage? It turns out, Prince Zuko, the old man said softly. What's the last thing you remember? I tensed up, it could very well be that this Prince Zuko, or rather his soul, is already in the pure world. And the Sharingan tribute allowed me to occupy his body. Continue to live. Damn. Any mentalist. However, no, not just anyone. If the Sharingan is involved, then it will be difficult to recognize my foreignness in this body. Even I myself don't feel it and didn't immediately realize that this was not my body. The village is like a glove. Don't open your cards. 
Perhaps this is some kind of temporary phenomenon. Or did I, like Orochimaru, change the container to gain youth and blood power? I don't know his white snake technique too well, the teacher protected it in the hope of taking over my body, but I doubt that it was it. Apparently I took the place of some cage's son or something. Perhaps my Sharingan sacrifice chose the most suitable container, or it was a transfer of another type, coordinate, for example. Or, more likely, temporary. It may well be that I have gone back in time. Warring states era? But such a ship. Maybe I'm actually among the ancients who built those cities like in Ama. The mirror lying on the floor next to the mattress reflected something familiar, and I turned around to see a huge tapestry with an obvious symbol of the land of fire. Only a little different, without the usual spiral, and the flames are more like a trident. And the color is not red, but black. Countries like these were formed only in the age of hidden villages, uniting from provinces belonging to different clans. So, not the past, but the future. Then this explains some points. Apparently, the Sharingan somehow sealed my consciousness in time and space, and then infused it into a suitable body. It is possible that that guy, Prince Zuko, drowned and left this world, and I unsealed and moved in. Hum, the Lord of Fire. Obviously the ruler. It's strange that daimyo are called that now. However, in the future everything may be completely different. But I seem to be the son of this master and such kinship. This is not a rootless orphan who does not belong to anyone. It seems that all of a sudden my dreams came true and I suddenly found a family. At least I have a father. Who left me this burn? Accidentally. No. I doubt it was an accident. The old man's face was too guilty. And the burn is too regular in shape. As if it were. Some kind of punishment. Are like the mark of a traitor. This point is worth clarifying in order to find out your status. The avatar did something to me, I whispered, choosing the obvious culprit. There's a lot of talk about him here, and I haven't figured out what it is yet, but he's probably someone strong. Maybe he is actually a mentalist or served as a conduit for my consciousness. I. It seems I do not remember anything, this news didn't change the old man's facial expressions much, he became a little sad, that's all, but not too much. Maybe he's used to holding his face. Who are you? I asked. It was necessary to get hold of information in order to get at least some idea of where I was, what this meant for me, and what to do next. I am your uncle, my name is Iroh, and your last name is also, Prince, I clarified. Um. I'm a prince, but that's not a surname, it's a title, Iroh frowned slightly, apparently realizing what, I don't remember, means. I am the older brother of the Fire Lord, Ozai. What does last name, mean? House. Why then is he the Lord of Fire, and not you, since you are older? I asked, because there was something here. Moreover, it was not worth focusing on all sorts of inconsistencies and, perhaps, words already forgotten by people of the future. It happened so, the old man answered, closing his eyelids for a moment. I had a son. Lu Ten. He died while I was at war. Fire Lord Azulon, your grandfather with his last will, decided that Ozai was more. Promising. He had heirs. When I returned, I did not challenge this decision. I grieved for my lost son, and I had no time for. Quarrels with my own brother. It looks like he has a lot of patience. I didn't want conflicts. And he also reports so calmly to those who are younger than him. So it turns out that I'm his nephew. And he also said, heirs. Does this mean I kind of have brothers or sisters? You said that Ozai has heirs? I have an older brother? I asked. No, you were Ozai's eldest child, Prince Zuko, Iroh smiled slightly forcedly. You have a younger sister, Azula. She is now fourteen and a half years old. What about me? You were almost seventeen, Prince Zuko, Iroh answered patiently. The same age as me. Was. It turns out that I. How can I say this? Will be the next Fire Lord. At the moment, Prince Zuko. You were expelled from the land of fire, Iroh said, clearly remembering something unpleasant. It was as if he was delaying this moment. Is this because of exile? I touched the burn on my face. How did it happen? Two. Years ago. The old man sighed, as if gathering his strength. Almost three years ago, in the year of the snake, you were at a military council. One of the generals. Suggested setting up a division of recruits to distract earth mages. You objected that it is not worth abandoning recruits and sacrificing young fighters. These words were offensive. 
and there was a call to Agni Kai. Agni Kai. This is, a ritual magic duel, fire duel. The reason for Agni Kai can be an argument or humiliation of an opponent. In other words, what affects honor? Such fights are not only a way to resolve conflicts, but also entertainment in the palace. Agni Kai can result in severe injury or even death of one of the duelists. Under his father, they were prohibited and used only in extreme cases, but Ozai had a different opinion, Iroh pursed his lips. Instead of that general, my younger brother, who considered himself offended by your behavior, Prince Zuko, came to you. You refused to fight your own father and. And I got this burn, I finished. Do you remember? The burn is on me, I chuckled. And you said my father did it. Since I didn't want to confront my father, he decided to expel me, right? Yes. Ozai said that you have lost your honor, Prince Zuko, Iroh bowed his head, and you decided to return it by finding the Avatar. Avatar. I still don't understand who it is. Er. And what should I call you? Prince Iroh? I decided to clarify, so as not to get into trouble. Iroh has never uttered a single respectful suffix. Like, Ozai Sama, or at least, Ozai Dono, he calls me a title, but for some reason he puts it before the name, not after, not Zuko Prince, but Prince Zuko, because of this, I thought it was a surname. No. When I followed you, I gave up the title, Iroh replied. You just call me, Uncle, or, Uncle Iroh. And again, Uncle, before the name. And when it's just, Uncle, then without a respectful suffix. How strange. Of course, many neglected them, especially people like Naruto, but still, where is the Uzumaki and where is the aristocrat, the brother of the daimyo? From the sound of it, he speaks very simple language for a prince, and it seems that he loved Zuko. He was not expelled, but he went with his nephew somewhere from the palace. Okay, uncle, so who is the avatar and why is he so important to the Fire Lord? The avatar is the only person in the world who can control all four natural elements, answered old man Iroh. Did you say everyone? Why four? I interrupted him. Fire, water, earth, air, he listed, for some reason ignoring the lightning. In the people of fire, fire magicians are born, in the people of water, water magicians are born, in the earth kingdom, earth magicians are born. The avatar is reincarnated in turn in each of the nations, water, earth, fire and air. The purpose of the avatar is to maintain balance and peace. There can only be one avatar in the world, but it is said that he can contact his previous incarnations through penetration into the world of spirits or meditation. The avatar is the link between the human world and the world of spirits. When an avatar dies, he is immediately reincarnated in the next people in the cycle, Iroh became gloomy. The penultimate avatar was Avatar Roku, he was from the Fire Nation, and in the next cycle of rebirth the avatar was supposed to be born as an airbender. But, about a hundred years ago the avatar disappeared. Where did you disappear to? I asked, as my uncle looked somehow guilty. No one knows. That's why we looked for him. First in the air temples, then here at the South Pole. After the disappearance of the Avatar, your great-grandfather Fire Lord Sozin decided to take over other countries, and the war is still going on. One of his first orders was, the destruction of all air mages. To kill the Avatar? I clarified, but you said that he is reincarnated? Usually the Avatar doesn't know who he is until he's 16, he learns to control his element, and only after that he undergoes training in all the other elements, Iroh rubbed his beard in embarrassment. Maybe. Sozin planned to kill the Avatar in his youth so that he would not have time to gain strength. But. The new Avatar never appeared. Hum, yeah, it turns out that there is some kind of guard like Rakuto Senin who doesn't allow things to turn out too much, and I had a cunning relative who decided that only the Uchiha clan should rule Konoha. Like how my father did it setting everyone up and Itachi in including because of their ambitions. As a result, the Avatar, who had been missing for a hundred years, has now appeared and will take responsibility, as my brother did in his time. And. He will massacre all these Fire Nation because they fought for a hundred years and even decided to kill all those monks. Cool prospects. Uncle. It became approximately clear to me who I was and why. I was looking for the Avatar. Only I still don't understand one thing. Who are magicians? Am I a magician too? What is this? I decided to ask. Most of the ruling families of all nations are the strongest magicians, Iroh explained, still patiently. 
We know how to control our element. Look, he took a breath and somehow cunningly moved his hand, instantly activating the source of chakra. A small phoenix flower lit up above his palm. It's even more difficult than just throwing it. Very good control. And he didn't use seals, although there were still body movements, as if he was helping the chakra go where it needed to go. Interesting. It's a pity I can't look at him with my Sharingan now. It's good that there are eyes. Do you want to say that a magician is someone who knows how to control some element? That's all? This is not given to everyone, Iroh extinguished the light. Fire is a capricious element, and it is difficult to control. As far as I know, it's more complicated than anything rest. Yeah, every genin boasts about his mission. Have you tried? Well, to develop some other element? I asked carefully. This is impossible for anyone except the Avatar, Iroh shook his head. In the future, it seems that they have clearly forgotten the ninshi that Rakuto Senen taught. Instead of shinobi there are magicians. Do you fight? Only with the help of magicians? I stroked the unusually bald back of the head, and with the help of weapons, the old man grinned, nodding at the swords on the wall. You love weapons, Prince Zuko. Yes, I. They seem familiar to me, I nodded. So what, we've been in exile for two years. So what do we do? We look at the map, guess where the avatar could be, and outline the next goal, Iroh shrugged. A map? I asked, barely restraining myself, can I take a look? Yes, of course, Prince Zuko. Iroh stood up and walked to the table with long scrolls. One of them was a map. And. This. Damn. It was as if all the air had been let out of me and I studied the scanty almost island state that my uncle showed me. They called it the whole world, thanks to the Sharingan, I had an excellent memory, and I could compare the map by scale. If we assume. Where are we now? I asked, and my uncle pointed at a point not far from the South Pole, if we compare the geography of my world, then. In this sea there was the province of Kentani. And where the largest island is Earth Kingdom. It was the land of lightning, just behind it was the land of snow, where many machines were made. It seems that it broke off as a separate island, the North Pole. A handful of islands remained from the land of water. Previously, it was cold there because of that northern current, but it seems very likely that due to the split of the land of lightning, the current began to wash the other shore. Maybe this used to be the south of the fire country. The local land of fire could not boast of size and was a small group of islands that seemed to break away from the land of iron. Really? Really Naruto? All the biju gathered in one place, and. It appears that their destruction simply swept away most of the landmass. Something was flooded by the sea, something. Just disappeared. The remnants of people who survived call themselves, magicians. What nonsense. How many years have passed? And, no matter how much has passed, people continue to fight. Commentary on Part 1. Chapter 1. Many questions map overlay web links reader fan art for the chapter web links web links about iro web links equals 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 part 1. Chapter 2. Acceptance equals 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 Yangwe era, excellent military era, year of the goat, sheep, 10th day 11th month. South Sea if I ever meet an Uzumaki again, the first thing I will do is give him a hearty punch. Maybe twice. Several days have passed since I was fished out of the sea and I managed to educate myself a little about local history. During the two years of exile, Zuko and Iroh collected a decent amount of information about the avatars and everything that related to them in one way or another, so that I could form at least a superficial opinion of what kind of biju is going on here. And my uncle himself turned out to be a good storyteller. He took my unconsciousness as a given, since the avatar is generally connected with many incomprehensible things. Well. If we proceed from the records of the locals, to whom all this was told by the avatars, who serve as a kind of guides to the world of spirits and the world of people, then the end of the world, which Uzumaki created 100%, affected the pure world and the world of Yomi, it's like hell. There on one spot it gathered so many tailed demons, and even that piece of the Shinju tree were summoned, that it looked like the technique united all the worlds for quite a long time. It is possible that the summoning worlds were also affected, since I found mention of very strange animals. For example, the air nomads, to whom the last avatar belonged, used six-legged flying bison for transportation. This is either some kind of leaked summoning or chakra mutants. In Orochimaru's laboratories I saw enough of what chakra can do when there is an unrealistic amount of it. I saw a guy with six arms who could spit webs, 
or a crab man with huge armored claws, and my summon, the Serpent of Aota, could perform ninjutsu techniques without any arms at all, so a six-legged flying beast that can use chakra to fly didn't bother me you'll surprise. The teacher always had his finger on the pulse, and I remember from the reports of his spies that shortly before the Fourth Shinobi World War, Uzumaki helped pacify some demon from the depths of Yomi, who was trying to break free to frolic with us. I think that such a burst of released chakra broke all sorts of seals that Uzumaki and that priestess of the country of demons had set there. Because, according to the reports of the avatars, who were short with the spirits, and it was quite easy for us to pull them out of the pure world, a certain, Vatu, the spirit of darkness and chaos, destroyed the boundaries of the worlds. But I think pride did not allow this Vat to admit that he was not the only one who tried, but that they helped him in this destruction. And who? That's right, my idiot friend. Uzumaki Naruto. After what he did, I'm generally surprised that there is any intelligent life here and that something has survived. Even the writing remained almost the same. I was better versed in the older scrolls and treatises than in the new ones. Some simplifications have already been invented there or some hieroglyphs have been forgotten, I don't know. The interesting thing is that simultaneous unification with the pure world seemed to save some people. Maybe the ancestors stood up for protection or created some kind of barrier, because, judging by the records, the avatar is some kind of spiritual entity that inhabits suitable people. In general, it is very similar to a certain temporary Jinchuriki, in which Biju manifests itself. The description of the avatar state, reminded me vividly of Naruto's golden shroud. He kind of became friends with his demon, and he gave him his chakra voluntarily or something like that. It also looked very bright, so much so that the Sharingans were blinded. After that cataclysm, some people were saved, they lived for some time on islands, sort of like living, lion turtles, which contained an entire city. Well, I know one such island for sure, it drifted not far from the land of lightning. During my short career in Akatsuki, before finding that crazy encorper from the cloud in which the eight-tailed one was hiding, the guys and I scouted out such a miracle island. The turtle was in fact simply gigantic in size and could easily accommodate two-thirds of Konoha on itself. True, I don't know how people could live there, since the island was similar to our forest of death. But, apparently, he will press, and it won't work out. That turtle was surrounded by serious barriers, and we didn't try to get through there because we received a tip where exactly that eight-tailed Jinchuriki could be found. Perhaps the Land of Lightning was not the only such turtle, and barriers and ancestral spirits saved people from chakra mutations. I don't know what this harmonious convergence is, but it is clearly some kind of fortunate state of the worlds, in which they managed to separate them back. The most interesting thing is that, it seems, the first Jinchuriki of the local origin was able to divide the worlds, who became the first avatar, because in the chronicles it is written in black and white that the world was able to be divided by a person who was possessed by a good spirit, a certain Rava. But, if he was equal in strength to a demon and before that he fought that Vatu for an infinitely long time, then. Maybe this has something to do with the yin and yang chakra? I was trying to figure out how much time had passed since I used Izanagi. Years continue to be considered cycles, although they began to be called, eras. As I found out by exclusion, now is the year of the goat, or more precisely, the sheep. As far as I understand, this is an animal similar to the goat, but for some reason they haven't heard of goats here, maybe they became extinct or mutated into sheep. Another year of the cat changed to the rabbit, but otherwise the names and order of the years of the cycle did not change, although the change of era now took place in the year of the dragon. Zuko was born in the year of the rabbit, the last year of the Wan era. And his sister was born in the year of the snake of the Huntai era. The year of the goat or sheep was the fourth year of the Yangwe era, the excellent military era. Before that there was the Huntai era, the era of honor and majesty, which succeeded the Wan era, the era of beginnings, and so on. I don't know yet who calls them and by what principle, but since the first avatar appeared, this has been the 35th era of humanity. That is, more than 400 years have passed since the appearance of the Avatar alone. As for the time of spirits, the sources equate the era of Rava to almost 9,000 years. But, Zuko and Iroh found older scrolls in the Southern Air Temple that had not yet been simplified. There I saw that the history was incorrectly rewritten. The hieroglyph day was changed to month, they only differ by a small tale, and in later censuses the month was even written as year. Maybe they thought that spirits had a different number, or for the sake of impressiveness, I don't know. 
In this case, this huge number of 19,829 years, which according to the Chronicles passed from the moment of the merger of the worlds until their reverse separation by spirits, is reduced to 53 years of the struggle between light and darkness. Not so little for such a gap. Nevertheless, any violation of such matters strives for balance and restoration of integrity. And usually this happens quite quickly. For example, the summoning puncture, which temporarily connects the worlds, grows together instantly, although a lot of chakra must be spent. Not every shinobi can do it. If you count backwards and take into account that the gap in space was held by a demon, so much chakra from the gap still comes out that it's terrifying. The merging of worlds is always a temporary phenomenon. It's like a wound that gradually heals. This is also supported by the mention of portals to the world of spirits, which are used by spirits, avatars and some people. Most likely, the harmonious rapprochement made it possible to almost separate the worlds, but left wormholes, like a cave of snakes, through which it was possible to penetrate into the world of my summoning. Well. Now, probably, everything is so distorted that it is impossible to get to Ryuchidu. However, you should get used to rolling your lip. The contract is signed with blood and chakra. And if nothing is clear about the chakra, since I'm still recovering, then the body is definitely different. At first I thought that perhaps there would be enough chakra, since Orochimaru changed bodies and calmly made the summoning, but. Then I remembered the main secret. The teacher was turning into a white snake. And this is no longer just a replacement of consciousness. I know for sure that he used his face only in the first stages, and then this white snake absorbed the body and made this body Orochimaru's body along with blood, absorbing new abilities. This didn't work out for me. I sealed Orochimaru's consciousness into my genjutsu, and Itachi was able to literally remove the white snake from my body and also seal it into his technique. Yes, and the unholy resurrection required DNA, which, thanks to technology, divided and filled someone else's body, making it, as it were, the very one in which the spirit was placed. In the end, I myself was able to resurrect Orochimaru from his cursed seal, which contained his DNA sample, by printing his consciousness, preserved in my genjutsu, into a new body. Then the teacher himself took most of his body from Kabuto. Well, yes, there were times. To the locals this will sound like complete nonsense. I found out that at least Naruto didn't move the moon or the sun, because the smaller divisions of time remained the same. There are 372 days in a year, 12 months, and still 31 days in months. They simplified the six-day period, the days of the month are simply counted, but new moons occur on the first and last days of the month, and the full moon from the 15th to the 17th is exactly the same. 500 years have passed, and in nothing has changed. The clock is also okay, there are 12 of them left, each 120 minutes long. On the ship they are counted by strokes, measured with a device, and the middle of the hour is indicated by ringing a small gong once. It turned out to be something in between the two previous time counts. All the mechanisms that kept time were from the land of snow. And they divided the day into 24 hours of 60 minutes. Maybe it was more convenient for them. Or maybe the accuracy was higher this way, I don't know. The dials were only at 12 o'clock. During the day the hand made a circle twice. Therefore, in order not to get confused, they said, the hour of the rat, or, the hour of the tiger, if you mean a time period, and if you set a time for a meeting, then they used the countdown according to the land of snow. They called the number and added, before noon. After noon, now they don't say the numbers, but they are striking half an hour. Nowadays people mainly navigate by the sun, and all sorts of monks and priests keep track of the exact time. However, Uncle Iroh likes to eat and sleep during the day at the hour of the sheep, lights out on the ship occurs after the hour of the pig, and the general wake-up time is at the hour of the dragon. By the way, I found out that Uncle Iroh was called the Dragon of the West, and he was a great general who killed the last dragon. Not something from water or earth, but a living one. Avatar Roku, who was from the Fire Nation, was revealed to be riding a living dragon. And then, after the death of Roku, Fire Lord Sozin allowed the hunt for dragons, although before that they were considered sacred and intelligent animals. According to all estimates, it turned out that after Naruto's Mega Bada Boom, human civilization was preserved only thanks to avatars. They were the main teachers and restorers, people relearned writing, began to build cities and master their abilities in elemental magic. Apparently, because of the pacifism of the spirit that inhabits the avatars, people were taught only the peaceful uses of their abilities. 
like water, healing, earth, construction, air, weather control, fire, creating all kinds of mechanisms, melting metal, etc. But people are such creatures that they never sit still. In addition, there is objectively very little land, and it is not quite fairly distributed among peoples. The local land of fire is almost naked volcanoes. As far as I am from agriculture, I also understand that you can't grow much from ashes and inconvenience. Rice for sure. 400 years ago, when a small handful of people remained, there was probably enough land, but with constant population growth, the lack of areas to grow food means starvation. And living on a volcano, constantly breathing smoke and being afraid of an eruption, while your neighbors across the strait have grabbed a huge territory for themselves that they cannot cultivate, is probably not fun at all. And there is a sense of injustice. But when I expressed this thought to my uncle, he gave me an interesting historical note. Over the course of 400 years, there were several avatars, although their names were erased from the memory of generations. Perhaps many of them did not live to see 20. They either fought with spirits, or climbed where they were not asked, or took on something that they were not comfortable with forces. But before Avatar Roku, who lived for 70 years, there was a woman. Avatar Kyoshi, who lived for more than 200 years, this is half of the entire era of avatars. This Kyoshi was from the country of Earth and, I must say, did a lot to ensure that her people lived better than anyone else. The Fire Nation, who lived on volcanoes but filled with iron, had their lands on the mainland. Two large rivers separated the province of Pohai from the rest of the mainland. The province was located just across the strait, and this area was the agricultural land of the Fire Nation. Wheat, rice and all sorts of vegetables were grown there. But during the time of Avatar Kyoshi, a certain Qin conqueror appeared in the Earth Kingdom, who, as it were, acted bypassing the King of the Earth, gathered an army and conquered the territories of the Fire Nation, declaring that these were illegal colonies on the territory of the Earth Kingdom. Moreover, after the Earth Kingdom captured the entire continent, all lands suitable for growing plants and animals, and a couple more islands, this conqueror Chin disappeared without a trace somewhere on the island of Kyoshi. And when the Fire Nation gathered an army to reclaim their lands, Avatar Kyoshi stood up to defend harmony, and banned battles and wars. So the Fire Nation had to trade with the Earth in order to exchange food from almost their own territories. And when Avatar Roku appeared among the Fire Nation, and, accordingly, the question of returning the lands arose, he also forbade disturbing harmony. It's as if the spirits don't feed on rice, they don't care that people need more than just divine light as food. My first impressions of what happened here, as with my clan, turned out to be correct. But not everything was so simple and unambiguous. The lands of the air nomads were rocky mountains, wild fruits and medicinal herbs grew there, and, as far as I understood, these nomads did not eat meat at all, but ate, pasture, led the life of monks, but, in principle, they were the least of them. After the destruction of all the airborne animals, their lands were not particularly populated, it was not so easy to get to the temples on foot, and those flying bison were exterminated or died out on their own without people leaving. The two water tribes lived at the south and north poles, covered with snow and ice. They traded in fish and all kinds of seals, sometimes exchanging animal skins for grain, fruits and vegetables. The southern tribe was almost destroyed. In general, only the Earth country lived richest and most developed. That is, the Earth Kingdom. But the harmony was broken when this chin of the Conqueror passed, and the Avatar refused the claims of the Fire Nation. After the last Avatar belonging to the Airbenders disappeared, a protracted war between the Country of Fire and the Earth Kingdom began, and a related search for the Avatar began. And so Zuko, to his misfortune, found this Avatar and died, and I took over his body. Asterisk, Prince Zuko, in the morning, after the wake-up call, Uncle Iroh entered my iron room. How are you feeling? Much better, I replied, getting out of bed. In fact, I feel completely healthy. The physical pleasure of finally being able to disperse chakra throughout the entire circulation system and take a deep breath. This avatar hit Zuko hard, so much so that his ribs cracked, and he, too, apparently drank cold water before his death. There are icy currents and icebergs all around. These days all my bones ached, I felt disgusting weakness, and I also periodically shivered with fever, especially at night. Iroh fed me some herbs and hot tea with honey, and told me stories about his son. Because of this old man's concern, I didn't know what to do next or what to do. In the end, I decided that since I got this body and someone loved this Zuko, 
then I should accept this gift and try to live the life that I received at such a price. Live with dignity. At one time, I abandoned my country, my friends, and part of my clan is guilty of leading our world to such a cataclysm. To the breakthrough of that terrible thing. It is unlikely that I will be able to fix anything, but. I am also responsible for this, and now, as a prince, I am responsible for the Fire Nation. Uzumaki swore that he would grab him and not let go until he brought all countries to peace. It seems he infected me with his stupidity. We should arrive at the harbor by sunset, Iroh said. Perhaps there will be commanders there who knew you before. Your expulsion. Try not to reveal your unconsciousness in the fact that we have met the Avatar. The old man looked worried and worried, could something be threatening me? I just advise you to be careful, my uncle smiled. People they feel differently about your exile, Prince Zuko. Fine. I think I should stretch myself to try and remember what it's like, to be a firebender. Commentary on Part 1. Chapter 2. Acceptance about the Shinobi World Calendar web links and a curious thing from the canon sent by a reader. Read the description. HTTPS colon slash slash VK dot com slash photo dash one one nine six three four five nine four underscore four five six two four two five eight two fan art from readers web links web links equals 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 part one. Chapter three. Understanding equals 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 tenth day of the eleventh month, year of the sheep of the Yangwe era. South Sea a light warm-up without much fanaticism showed that Zuko did not skimp and performed his training conscientiously. Stretching allowed me to do the splits, make a bridge or cartwheel. The muscles are also well developed, well dried, the lungs are developed for proper breathing. I was pleased with the source material. Zuko and I had a similar body composition, although I had more definition due to the mass of muscles, but I think this is a fixable matter. I'm still a little older than him, and teacher Orochimaru worked with me not only at the training ground, but also in the laboratory. So, in addition to the cursed seal for two stages of transformation, I had a body improved with the help of medical techniques. I trained on a small area of the deck, but after thinking about it, I didn't start working with fire or chakra. Soldiers in reddish samurai armor, vaguely reminiscent of Dumaru Kurasas from the era of the Warring States and the first Hokage, were spinning around. As far as I understand, not all of them are magicians, but Zuko had his own helmet, the same as the soldiers, so I haven't seen any insignia yet. I would never believe that there were no spies of the Fire Lord on such a ship, which was supposedly led by a prince in exile. At least report that dearest son committed suicide, but still found the avatar or whatever he was doing. Rulers simply have to keep their finger on the pulse, and I believe Zuko's father knows very well what he is doing or where his offspring is. I still don't understand what this expulsion was really connected with, but I have doubts that the Lord of Fire, as if an adult and the ruler of the country, was really, offended, by the teenager, his own son, who said something there. However, Itachi, also said a lot about the clan before that night, how to kill everyone. But I don't think it was worth comparing my brother and Zuko. It is possible that Zuko's father wanted him to gain some experience outside the palace walls, perhaps that he wanted to teach him a lesson in this way, because I already heard from the soldiers that, the prince became calmer, apparently Zuko was spoiled or unrestrained. Containing yourself is the first thing a shinobi is taught, something that was taught in the Uchiha clan. To show intemperance is to disgrace yourself. Sometimes I even envied the idiot Uzumaki in the fact that nothing held him back, he was not ashamed to show feelings, be blunt or ask if he didn't know something. He could talk a lot of nonsense, cry, or smile wider than his own striped cheeks. Only Rakuto knows how much I enjoyed pissing him off. It was as if he felt for both of us. In general, it is better to conduct research into the abilities of the inherited body in private, in order to understand what I can do at the moment and what I am capable of. At least count your reserve. So far, in terms of physical activity, taking into account fatigue, it hasn't been too much. But there are several factors to take into account. Perhaps I have not yet fully recovered from the beating by the avatar. Or the study of fire magic gives some kind of imbalance in the balance of chakra in the hearth. And therefore, the body, for example, has a lot of yin chakra or, conversely, yang chakra, whereas ordinary ninjutsu requires certain proportions of these components. The feeling of fatigue also depends on balance. Alternatively, after the chakra cataclysm caused by Uzumaki, people nevertheless mutated and now their hearth is actually sharpened only for the release of elemental chakra and that's all. So this required thought and understanding, 
so it was worth trying to work with chakra away from prying eyes. I believe that an imbalance in the balance of chakra in the hearth is very possible. I felt chakra, but it was strange. It's not for nothing that in the academy, in order to become an A-class genin, that is, a fighter who goes into the field, you had to score a total of at least 100 points on the entire Nin Tai Gen Riki Soku Kensei ability chart in. It's good that here I had Uncle Iroh, who is clearly a magician, capable of teaching me lessons in local elemental ninjutsu, so that I wouldn't get lost at all, and wouldn't give myself away with a sudden change of movements and abilities. The avatar, of course, hit me on the head, but not to the same extent as to at the same time hammer home knowledge from 500 years ago. However, there were thoughts. For an old man, Iroh is amazingly tactful. He doesn't babble, doesn't lecture, answers questions to the point, and somehow isn't annoying at all. Either this is a feature of Iroh, or the fact is that I have changed, no longer rushing to nowhere. However, I do not rule out that I have not yet fully realized what is happening, and somewhere in the depths of my soul I believe that this whole world is some kind of illusion. Also an option, in principle. Who knows if I didn't imprison myself with that unnamed technique in self-genjutsu, in which I decided to correct all the mistakes and live a long life in which I have a father, uncle and sister. Another option. This is my afterlife in the pure world. In any case, the situation that happened to me is my own fault. You could do nothing and not move anywhere, but if salvation took such a strange form, then accept what you deserve. There was nothing holding me back in the previous world. I learned everything about what happened to the Uchiha clan, took revenge on those who were to blame. Itachi said that he always loved me, Naruto and Sakura forgave me. And the war was stopped one way or another. To some extent, the world was not completely destroyed and swallowed up by that horror. There is a sprout left that is trying to survive. I reached the old man's room. Oh, Prince Zuko. I was just about to have some tea, would you like to join me? Iroh smiled. I nodded watching the old man heat up a metal teapot in his hands, and then carefully pour the tea into low cups. The movements are precise, precise, but incredibly smooth, as if he. Yes. He is in meditation. Interesting. I love jasmine tea, my uncle said after the first sip. Been addicted to it since the siege of Ba Sing Se. I chuckled, remembering that Naruto also liked it with jasmine. Uncle, when the tea was finished, I decided to ask, tell me, is my ponytail something of status and do I have to wear it or can I get rid of it? A. When I was training today, then. Sweat gets on my hair under this hairpin, and I feel bad, can I get rid of it? Well. You decided so yourself, Prince Zuko. After the expulsion, my uncle shrugged, turning away slightly and sorting through the dishes. Before this, you wore a regular bun. This hairstyle is unofficially adopted among the highest nobility of the Fire Nation. Among men. For heirs to the throne or princes, the bun is secured with a special hairpin with the symbol of fire. Now I don't have the right to do this and decided to come up with something of my own? That's right, Iroh nodded. All the questions regarding the expulsion were apparently unpleasant for the old man, but he always answered. I guess I thought I'd quickly find the avatar and get that bundle of nobility back. That's why I did such a stupid hairstyle, I chuckled, seeing in my uncle's eyes that he agreed with me. I want to cut it off. During the time I was lying down, hair had already appeared on my shaved head, so I was no longer bald as a knee. My uncle nodded, apparently not seeing anything reprehensible in my desire. Also. I wanted to ask you, Uncle Iroh, I sighed. During training, I realized that I couldn't remember what to do. To cause a fire. Can you help me with this? Of course, Prince Zuko, the old man nodded. I think after the ship is repaired we can start doing this training. Okay, I breathed. Also. I wanted to ask you. I already understood about my father. I wanted to find out what was wrong with my mother and maybe a little more about my sister. What are they and what is our relationship? Your mother, Princess Ursa. Iroh stroked his beard thoughtfully. She. You can say that she was not born a princess. My father, Fire Lord Azulon, was searching for the Avatar and the descendants of the past Avatar, Avatar Roku. Ursa played in a theater in the small town of Haraa, it seems she was even engaged to someone. She was married to my younger brother. The father wanted the abilities of his descendants to be enhanced by the blood of the descendants of the Avatar. I remember their wedding. Ursa seemed unhappy with your father, it's possible that she loved that guy a lot. Does Fire Lord Ozai really think I'm illegitimate? 
I chuckled, assessing the situation. From the very beginning, my uncle hesitated, which means I probably shouldn't like the end of the story. In this light, it would be logical to get rid of the eldest child if his mother turned out to be unfaithful. Any reason will do. He opened his mouth at the wrong time, said the wrong thing, looked the wrong way. No, Prince Zuko, you cannot be illegitimate, you are Ozai's son, but perhaps. More your mother's son, Iroh shook his head. As far as I have been able to find out, Ursa fled the palace after your father became the Fire Lord. So my mother left me and my sister. I actually don't know what happened to her, Iroh looked away. When I returned to the Land of Fire, Ursa was no longer in the palace, and Ozai did not want to talk about her. So I don't want to speculate. I chuckled. When did my father become the Fire Lord? Fire Lord Azulon died at the end of the Huntai era. Ozai was inaugurated at the beginning of the Year of the Dragon of the New Era. A good omen. And a year after my father became the Fire Lord, I was banished. Why yes, in the Year of the Snake. You have just turned 14, and you were admitted to the First Military Council. When is my birthday? You were born on the last day of the first month, Prince Zuko. Agni Kai took place on the third day of the second. When was my sister born? And what can you say about her? Does she look like our mother too? I decided to fully clarify family issues. Azula was born in the year of the snake, on the sixth day of the fourth month, Prince Zuko. And no, she doesn't look like your mother. Azula has always been a very capable girl, already at the age of ten she became the master of fire. The old man clearly did not want to say something. And I. When did I become a fire master? You. Are only on the path to mastery, Prince Zuko. Iroh closed his eyes, as if expecting something unpleasant from me. During our journey, you became stronger and learned a lot, but I doubt that you have surpassed your younger sister. So Azula is much stronger and more capable than me. I clarified. And women can inherit the country, right? So are the younger children, judging by what happened with you and my father. Yes, the Fire Lord can leave any of his children as heir, Iroh sighed, clearly not wanting to upset me with the fact that, most likely, Ozai had already decided everything and I, as too incapable, and also, too similar to my mother, was sent to free bread out of sight. Judging by the reaction, it seems that Prince Zuko did not understand this, naively believing that he will find the Avatar and everything will be the same. Aren't you angry, Prince Zuko? Iroh asked carefully. This unconsciousness allowed me to look at the situation from the outside, detached, without emotions and feelings, I answered. I don't remember what happened before. I don't remember the palace or how I lived there. Did I want to go back there? It appears that it is best for me to step aside and give in, as you did. They gave in to their younger brother. Are you happy about this? Ozai. Wanted power too much and believed that my aspirations for peace were not what the Fire Nation needed, Iroh shook his head. After the death of my son, I lost my taste for life, but. Having shared exile with you, I gradually began to come to my senses. You are my meaning, Prince Zuko. To please your father, you try to be not who you are, you killed everything good that was in you. I guess the meeting with the Avatar removed everything superficial and left only you. I nodded, thinking about his words. Looks like I was right about Zuko's lack of restraint. If you try to be something other than who you are, for most people it turns out stupidly ridiculous and funny. People who cannot accept themselves puff themselves up about something, flutter about, prove something to someone, pretend, go out of their way, and are at odds with themselves. Hence the inability to concentrate and concentrate on something important if all your attention is scattered on this appearance and maintaining the mask. In addition, there was obvious rivalry between the children, while the younger sister excelled on all counts and was the favorite of her father, whose love Zuko wanted with all his might to earn. Rakuto, how this reminds me of my childhood. I was so worried that my father only devoted time to Itachi. But my brother was the best, he tried to somehow compensate for this. And my mother, my mother constantly consoled me. I was offended and did not even suspect how difficult it was for my brother to be the heir of the clan and torn between so many fires, and then that poisonous hatred. Zuko was 13 and Azula was 11 when their mother disappeared. She could very well have been killed. Or the truth has escaped, unable to be in palace she betrayed her children. At the very least, no matter what happens and no matter what this Ursa is motivated by, from the point of view of children at that age it will be a betrayal. What remained was his father, who constantly had to prove something. And Zuko lost, not understanding the true background of things. 
Orochimaru has eaten a lot of my brains out about internal harmony. I was strong, but strength is always relative. Of the two strong ones, the one who is calmer, confident in himself and his ideals, and fights for what he believes in, will win. Naruto could win almost by faith alone. He swept away all obstacles and embarrassed his opponents with his will and fortitude. I hate to admit it, but I agree with it. So I learned to be myself. Face your demons, embrace all sides of yourself. Calmness and steadfastness of spirit is the secret of true mastery. Understanding and acceptance of yourself and the surrounding reality. Living every moment of life without regret. The state of Haitian, which I once confused with indifference. I thought I accepted my hatred, although I was still blinded by it. I tried to be indifferent and emotionless, thinking it was calm. But then I accepted my love and the fact that I was wrong. All your feelings. I was able to talk to my brother, even after his death. He accepted Orochimaru and at the very end he accepted Uzumaki, whom he had rejected and denied for a long time. And finally I achieved that same peace of mind that the teacher told me about. I could see that Naruto had changed a lot. I saw it both with the Sharingan and just felt it. His gaze changed. He just said, good to see you, Sasuke, and I understood everything. His inner demon was much more alive and angry than mine or anyone else's. And he was able to come to an agreement with him. I was able to accept myself in this world. It's amazing. Uzumaki was able to complete a full-fledged merger with a biju. I'm not even sure that Rakuto Senin himself could do this. Naruto, it seems, never knew what workarounds were. He went straight ahead, but he always knew what he wanted, and he accepted himself for who he is. Now he is just a part of me. And it seems that part of this world. At the moment, first of all, I should get back into shape, and then decide what exactly to do next. I said to my uncle, who silently sat opposite and did not show any impatience at all. He didn't ask anything, but I wanted to answer him. Something tells me that Iroh has already reached the state of Hei Joshin, serene peace and harmony of spirit. We managed to discuss with my uncle some points regarding local chronology, which were a little unclear to me. It turned out that there are still eras, counted according to the order of life of all avatars. This was adopted during the Earth era, that is, during the life of Avatar Kyoshi. Thus, in the year of the Dragon of the Zhao era, the Age of Fire began, in the third year of which Roku was born. The Age of Fire never changed due to the fact that the Avatar of Air was not officially introduced, although Roku died in the year of the Dragon of the Ming era, already 112 years ago. In general, the Age of Fire has lasted for 16 eras. For me, calling eras that way is somehow stupid, or we simply had a numbering of era cycles. It is not surprising that there is complete confusion around here about when what happened. I had just finished trimming the tail when I felt the ship slow down. Harbor, Prince Zuko, Uncle Iroh appeared. We should go ashore to ask permission to repair the ship. Yes, communication with the outside world will best show my true status. Commentary on Part 1. Chapter 3. Understanding Reader Fan Art Web Links The Nin Tai Gen Riki Soku Kensei in Diagram is measured upon graduation from the Shinobi Academy, the distribution of teams and mentors. Nin. Knowledge and degree of control of ninjutsu, techniques of concealment, detection and destruction, the art of the ninja. Tai. Knowledge and degree of control of taijutsu, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Gen. Knowledge and degree of control of genjutsu, illusion techniques. Ken, intelligence, IQ level. Riki, strength, muscular strength of the entire body. Soku, speed, speed of movement and reaction. Say, energy, chakra level, reserve size. In, print, speed of execution and degree of control of manual seals. Just for reference. In addition to ninjutsu, genjutsu and taijutsu in the shinobi world, there are also dojutsu, techniques using eyes, special vision, Iryojutsu, medical techniques, kanshijutsu, sensory techniques, fuinjutsu, sealing techniques, hajutsu, special unique techniques inherent in a particular clan, kenjutsu, battle with weapons, swords, etc. Equals 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 part one, chapter four, opponents and fans equals 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 tenth day of the eleventh month, year of the sheep of the Yangwei era. Repair Harbor, General Ira, the great hero of our people. I am the commander of Zhao, a tall man of about 35 in the brown-red clothes that the Fire Nation military wore here made a slightly strange bow. He had dark hair pulled back into a, 
noble bun, on top of his head, thick eyebrows and very thick sideburns, giving his face a monkey-like appearance. I'm retired, Commander Zhao, Iroh waved his hand good-naturedly. The brother and son of the Fire Lord is always a welcome guest, said Zhao, as if referring to the same uncle, in principle, Iroh is also the son of the Fire Lord, but maybe I was also listed. However, they spoke about the guest in the singular. What brings you to my harbor? This caveat was interesting. I haven't gotten too deep into the local military ranks yet, but it seems that commander is still lower than general, like a rank Junin and S rank Junin. Or is it all about that Iroh specified that he was an X? But it seemed to me that Zhao indicated to us that he is in charge here and this is his harbor. The commander didn't notice me point blank, didn't even glance sideways, looked only at my uncle. However, it is not a fact that he knew the prince by sight, he could have mistaken me for a soldier or a bodyguard. Our ship needs repairs, Uncle Iroh said calmly. The damage looks serious, Zhao examined the bruised side. What happened to you? The southern sea is full of surprises, Commander Zhao, Iroh chuckled. I have no doubt that you know this better than anyone. I think you hit an iceberg, Zhao grinned contentedly. Maybe you'd like a drink? I invite you, General Iroh. Prince Zuko and I would be pleased to accept your invitation, Commander. This is a great honor for us. I hope you have ginseng tea? We haven't replenished our supplies for a long time, and ginseng tea is one of my favorites, Iroh walked forward, indicating my presence. So it didn't seem to me. Otherwise, you never know there is some local etiquette that I haven't learned about yet. It's curious. Zhao's face, who never looked at me, didn't show any surprise, which means he knows that I'm some kind of prince in exile but he was in no hurry to bow to me or show his affection, and he didn't blink an eye. The harbor island turned out to be not very large and entirely rocky. Icy stones, a leveled area along the parking lot of iron ships, a strange-looking fence made of planed stakes tied into three-dimensional six-pointed stars. Their purpose remained unclear to me. I doubt that the barrier is against ships, since they are stopped by the land itself, but it is possible that it is against an attack from the water. Although my uncle said that the southern water tribe had collapsed and only a couple of dozen old women, a few women and children remained there. About 500 meters from the harbor stood some kind of structure like a small fort with turrets, it seemed to be still under construction. Apparently, protection in case of attack. Between the fort and the barrier of stakes stood solid large four-walled tents with red triangular flags of the fire country. One of them stood out with a large gilded fire sign on the side a more complex red roof that resembled a pagoda, and a guard of two samurai in full regalia. My uncle and I went into this tent. Inside there was a large map of the world. There were weapons in stands. There are thick red mats on the floor. The walls were also clearly insulated, and the inside of the tent was much smaller than the outside. However, the eleventh month at the South Pole is already winter, all because of the northern ice current, although it should be warmer on the mainland. By the end of the year, the capital of the Earth Kingdom will fall. The Fire Lord will finally win the war. Zhao said, looking at the map, as if he were the Fire Lord. Ba Sing Se is a tough nut to crack, Iroh smiled serenely, but my brother is not lacking in perseverance and strength. It seems that two years at sea have shortened your tongue, Prince Zuko, the commander said, finally looking at me. I raised my eyebrow slightly, glancing sideways at my uncle. It appears that Zhao knew Zuko before his exile. How is your search for the avatar going? HN. Judging by the greed with which Zhao examined my face, especially the burn, one can suspect that he and Zuko had some kind of personal relationship. Definitely animosity, and he also knew something. Uncle said that we were attracted by some ray of light that reached the sky. And we found an avatar who looked like a child. It is possible that we were not the only ones who saw that ray. There were more ships on the shore, and the South Sea is actually not that big, and I was already thinking about spies. It seems that the commander is somehow familiar with the art of Ninso, which all Uchiha mastered perfectly, reading emotions and thoughts from facial expressions and muscle contractions. Perhaps just great experience. Despite the fact that I don't have a Sharingan, my memory was with me and I was able to read many emotions and reactions, even if I spent a little more effort on it than with the Sharingan. But, it is important to see as much as possible in order compare with existing memories and analyze. However, it's very stupid to hope to find the avatar, the commander continued insinuatingly, tactically choosing for processing. 
a boy who had proven himself to be poor in control and intemperance, and not his uncle, whose face never left a serene smile. The Avatar died a hundred years ago along with all the airbenders. Unless, of course, you have other information, Prince Zuko. The Avatar is the only one who can stop your father's plans. Who can stop you from winning this war? If you have any loyalty left, Prince Zuko, you will tell me what you have learned. You seem like a reasonable person to me, Commander Zhao. I played along, looking at my uncle's detached face. It's too early to say exactly what we are facing. But this man was very strong. The destruction of our ship speaks for itself. Zhao pulled away from me, opening his mouth. Apparently, nothing like this was expected from me. At that moment, soldiers entered the tent. Commander, on your orders, we interrogated the crew of the arriving ship. She confirmed that Prince Zuko captured the Avatar, but he managed to escape, one of them said. The sailors say that the Avatar looked like a child of about twelve, he had a flying staff, air nomad clothes, a shaved head with a blue arrow tattoo, like all airbenders. So a twelve-year-old boy defeated you and your people, Prince Zuko? Zhao stuck out his lip contemptuously. You're even more pathetic than I thought. You yourself just said that the Avatar can interfere with my father's plans, Commander Zhao. Did you really think that one simple person with a group of soldiers could defeat someone so powerful? I chuckled. Or do you disrespect Fire Lord Ozai so much, thinking that he cannot cope where any 16-year-old boy, whom you personally consider pathetic, should cope? I figured my mission would be reconnaissance, or at the very least, reconnaissance in force, to make sure it wasn't a fake. We immediately moved towards our troops, and instead of helping an action plan we received ridicule and insults. Prince Iroh, I was exiled immediately after my first war council, so I'm not entirely sure if this is even the norm in the Fire Nation army. As a general, how would you rate this? The faces of the soldiers and Zhao himself stretched out in surprise. Yes, the job of a shinobi isn't just about throwing kanai at moving targets. Calculating people and manipulating them is also part of the specifics of the profession. My brother was a very good teacher, and the Uchiha clan is a clan of aristocratic shinobi who know how to listen, think and lead anyone into verbal traps and illusions if they want. Don't get angry, Prince Zuko, my uncle grinned benevolently, looking at me slyly. He had already received his tea and radiated contentment with his entire appearance. I think, Captain. That is, Commander Zhao was simply too happy to learn that we have news about the Avatar. That's right, the commander quickly answered, pulling himself together. It was clear that he was calculating his course of action and his risks. A cunning and ruthless man who fears the strong and loves to humiliate the weak. I have hundreds of ships at my disposal, and I will find the Avatar. You will complete your repairs, board the ship and be able to sail. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to prepare my expedition. Thank you for the tea, Commander Zhao, my uncle thanked. We won't test your hospitality. Come on, Prince Zuko. I suppose after the repairs we should stop at a port somewhere to replenish our supplies. Ginseng tea is so great. Of course, Uncle Iroh, I chuckled. Goodbye, Commander Zhao. I wish you success in your search for the Avatar. If you think that you have outwitted me and will be able to catch the Avatar before me, then you are not my rival, Zhao said to me behind me and almost spat it out. You are just a prince in exile. No home, no allies. Even your father abandoned you. You are a disgrace and disgrace to the Fire Nation in his eyes, and your scar proves it. I noticed how tense Iroh was and slowly turned around, imitating my uncle's smile. I will remember your words, Commander Zhao. I finally understood the trick of Uzumaki, who infuriated everyone with his smile and indifference. This warrior was clearly running into Agni Kai and hoped that Prince Zuko would definitely call him, trying to prove that Zhao was wrong. Why Agni Kai needs Zhao is still unclear, but now challenging him to a fire duel according to rules unknown to me would be an imprudent step. You seem to think that by returning the Avatar, you will earn your father's forgiveness and become Crown Prince again. But if he needed you, he would have taken you back a long time ago, with or without the Avatar, Zhao grinned. You have no honor, you. Enough, Commander. Uncle Iroh interrupted him, and I felt a wave of key from him. If you continue to insult my nephew, then I will consider that you have no honor. Is there much honor in an adult battle mage bullying a boy, your guest? Thank you again for the tea, he finished in a calm voice, and all the soldiers and Zhao died. I even remembered the Chunin exam in the Forest of Death when we met Orochimaru for the first time. 
His eerie, ominous key made me unable to move or breathe. Killing lust is not a full-blown attack, but it is felt on an emotional and spiritual level. I see that they haven't forgotten how to use this technique here either. We easily reached our ship, which was skillfully replaced with plating. Did I know this Zhao before? I asked my uncle. Why did he want me to challenge him to Agni Kai? Zhao was the captain of the palace guard at the time the Agni Kai occurred that left you with a burn on your face, Prince Zuko. I don't know what happened between you, but this man is very ambitious. Perhaps he believes he will be doing Fire Lord Ozai a favor if he gets rid of you. Agni Kai is the only time and place where you can kill a prince without consequences or punishment. Of course, if the prince himself challenges someone to a duel. Otherwise, you are untouchable. According to our laws, even your father cannot, for example, execute you. So Zhao himself couldn't call me to Agni Kai. What are the rules for this holy duel? A fire master cannot summon someone who has not achieved mastery, but can accept the challenge. Besides, you are much younger. In general, for Agni Kai there are no restrictions on the age and gender of duelists. It's just that a woman can challenge a man, a junior can challenge an older man, a lower rank can challenge a higher rank, and if it's the other way around, then it will lose honor and can simply be murder. Yes, I agree there, I chuckled. The rules were clear. What an honor if a Jonin challenges Jennins to a fight, or a failed groom challenges a girl who rejected him to a fight. And with the younger ones, everything is clear too. As I expected, father is not particularly eager to return Prince Zuko to the palace, and many of his subordinates think so. Some are even ready to help with the rejected offspring. Why did you tell us that we saw the avatar, Prince Zuko? Iroh asked when we returned to the ship. As far as I understand, I wasn't the only one who saw it, I shrugged. I had doubts that the team wouldn't spill the beans. Still, this. The avatar had not been seen for a hundred years, and then he appeared. There are many witnesses, and someone will still want to curry favor. Secretly or openly. How much honor is there to hang out at sea with an exiled prince? I didn't remember anything, but this Zhao's face. It seemed to me that it was some kind of trap. Therefore, I did not act as perhaps was expected of me. It was the right decision, Iroh chuckled. Your intuition did not let you down. You began to listen to your heart. My heart tells me that it's time to refresh myself and finally start training in fire magic. Uncle laughed cheerfully and nodded. Asterisk 18th day of the 11th month, year of the sheep of the Yangwe era. Southeast Bay, Whale Tail Island we sailed from the repair harbor six days ago, when the ship was completely restored. To replenish supplies, we moored to the island of Whale Tail, which is actually shaped like a tail fin. This is the northernmost island of the former southern possessions of the air nomads, but it is much warmer here than at the pole. The cold current almost did not reach the island, Komodo rhinoceroses were bred here. Unusual creatures with thick skins and three horns, resembling a cross between a lizard and a bull, were used as mounts and meat animals. They ate little, tolerated transportation well on ships, and were also obedient. Their skin did not burn well, and there was no wool. They calmly withstood two people in considerable armor, as some soldier enlightened me. Rhinoceros infantry meant that one person controls the armored creature, and the second attacks. A squadron of southern invaders was based on the whale tail, who controlled the southern lands and periodically raided the water tribe and the mainland, ravaging the villages of the earth country, capturing magicians and sending them to a floating prison located off the western coast of the earth kingdom, somewhere on the outskirts of the sea. Monsters. This was the name given to the sea located between the land of fire, the mainland and the southern possessions of the nomads. However, this is not surprising, since, according to my estimates, after Naruto's technique, it was in this place that most likely there was the largest spill of chakra. Orochimaru told me that after a biju breaks through, their chakra remains, which is quite poisonous and has a mutational effect. And there is so much of it that it does not dissipate quickly. We learned how to collect and seal it, and there have always been pseudo jinchuriki, like the Kinjin brothers from the cloud, the pearls of the teacher's collection of dead legends. These two once forced Kayubi to devour themselves, and they themselves ate his chakra flesh, as a result of which they transformed and became stronger. So many of Orochimaru's developments to strengthen and modify bodies were associated with the stored biju chakra. But not all organisms, if they did not have a special chakra capable of receiving biju chakra, survived after transformation. Are they turned into such monsters that they couldn't take a look? 
The commander at the base was Colonel Monk, who, as it turned out, had once served under Uncle Iroh, so we were greeted differently than at the repair harbor. General Iroh, the colonel interrupted our lunch. We have heard rumors that the Avatar is on Kiyoshi Island. We received orders to capture the Avatar, but I decided that your nephew should lead the capture. Well, yes, there is no escape from responsibilities, someone will help, someone will drown, but it is unlikely that you will be able to stay away. Commentary on Part 1. Chapter 4. Opponents and admirers to better navigate events, eras and years, I created a calendar https colon slash slash vk.com slash photo dash 11963459 underscore 45624258 equals 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 part 1. Chapter 5. Intelligence equals 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 19th day of the 11th month, year of the sheep of the Yangwe era. River Eel Peninsula Early in the morning we entered one of the rivers and moored on a rocky peninsula that jutted out from the mainland to the south. Judging by the map, then somewhere a hundred kilometers from our temporary harbor is the city of Omashu, the second largest citadel of the Earth Kingdom, which no one has yet been able to take. My uncle remained waiting on the ship, and I, along with a relatively small reconnaissance and capture team who called themselves the Rhinoceros Gang, went to the village of Chin, located about 40 kilometers from our landing site. Wasn't the Avatar seen on Kiyoshi Island? I asked Colonel Monk, who also went with us. Their tame monster is preventing them from swimming to Kiyoshi. A giant sea serpent, Monk explained. He can sink the ship, so it's better not to go there alone. Therefore, we went around the peninsula and entered from the rear. I know one secret. And which? People are strange creatures, Monk chuckled. We all have our reasons for following you, Prince Zuko. And local people have their own reasons for helping us. What are the reasons? I asked. You may have heard the story of how Kiyoshi Island was created. Having separated it from the land, it was created by Avatar Kiyoshi, who died 200 years ago at lunchtime. Yes, I heard something like that, I remembered. There was also something about the conqueror Chin, who chopped off our part of the mainland from the Fire Nation, which Avatar Kiyoshi did not allow to be returned. That's right. Beyond that pass is the village of Chin, named after that commander. It was partly formed from people who followed this chin. They hate avatars and believe that all the evil in the world comes from them. These people will be happy to help us capture the avatar. And how can they help? Avatars, of course, are powerful and all that, but even an avatar is not allowed to split the earth to the ground, Monk chuckled. Kiyoshi separated the island for herself, but it is still connected to the land. The isthmus between the mainland and Kiyoshi Island is quite shallow at low tide but only in the village of Chin do they know the time and place of the fort. An excellent plan, Colonel, I approved. You were actually a good scout and pay attention to detail. Thank you, Prince Zuko, Monk chuckled. The Colonel is still quite young, about 30. He wore a hairstyle similar to the one Zuko had before I had my hair my way. Monk also had round gold earrings in both his ears and his nose. A long thin mustache intercepted the rings, apparently for weight, and there was also a narrow beard. The skin is dark, and the hair is blue-black. He wore only part of the standard brown-red equipment, leaving his hands bare and was a fire mage, while most of the reconnaissance fighters were not magicians. But as far as I understand, each of the rhinos was fluent in some kind of weapon. For example, Vashir was a marksman, a kudo master, he could fire four arrows at once and hit where he aimed. The uncle said that the red mask tattoo on Vashir's eyes and the red diamond are the sign of the Yuyan archers, an elite unit of Fire Nation warriors who guard the reconquered province of Pohai and are located in the fortress of the same name. Thanks to such a noticeable appearance, I distinguished Vashir from all the other rhinoceroses, and although he was not a magician, he used fire arrows. I saw him training. It was a little strange what Vashir was doing among the southern invaders, since the Yuyan mark was, so to speak, obvious, but he didn't look like a deserter, and his accuracy was beyond praise, and it's better not to cope with the Sharingan. Once upon a time, my brother and I also loved to shoot with a bow, but Shinobi could usually catch an arrow as it approached, and they also heard its whistle in advance. So Shinobi did not use bows for battles, only for training or hunting wild animals. Over the past few days, since I recovered from my injury, Uncle Iroh showed me what firebending was and gave me some ideas, in general. 
fire magic, was most similar to the combined fire taijutsu of the thick-browed Rock Lee's teacher, Might Guy. During the war, he was on the front line, so I saw and involuntarily remembered a couple of his techniques. Guy did not make seals, but with taijutsu movements he forced the chakra inside his body to transform into elemental chakra and, in fact, leave the body. However, his attacks were still more based on taijutsu, and the fire was more likely a side effect of the excessive power of the blows. That is, with body movements, Guy forced his hearth to create a certain movement of chakra, which led to the execution of the technique. In general, local magicians did not know how to secrete chakra as such or control it in the sense of a shinobi. Conquest of the elements was based on several combinations of kata, thanks to which the technique seemed to occur. In the same way that we memorize the seals and chakra movements in this process, magicians memorized the movements by concentrating, jing, that is, energy, and received fire jutsu. That is, in fact, they did not mix the chakra inside the hearth from the physical and spiritual components, but, roughly speaking, they isolated the spiritual component, and physical was taken from movements. At the same time, according to my estimates, as it spreads over time, 50% of the equipment's power was lost, if not more. Moreover, due to such clumsy training, the physical component was poorly developed and almost impossible to control mentally. In general, while my body was not adapted for full-fledged ninjutsu due to a balance imbalance, which I almost immediately guessed. It will take time to correct this through training and meditation. Restore the necessary balance and be able to control the chakra. It's as if Zuko had used only the right half of his body all his life, and because of this, the left half had become weak and all the muscles were distorted. It's good that he loved weapons and thanks to this he developed his body sufficiently, so everything can be fixed. So far, in management, I'm like a student at the academy, I've just managed to find my own home. In order not to arouse suspicion, I first had to adapt and remember how to control the fire. At some points it seemed like hammering nails with a microscope, although even with such unadaptability, the local magicians were still able to learn something. For example, they could create fire with kicks or make it simmer in their palms to warm tea. The pinnacle of this was the heat redirection technique, available only to a few masters. Iroh said that with this jutsu my great-grandfather Sozin pacified the volcano, causing the lava to cool. By local standards, Uncle Iroh's control was generally prohibitive, but it seems that only he thought of using fire magic to brew tea for himself, heating water to the desired temperature. However, I was also able to warm up my hands and even almost melted the casing when I wanted to test how hot I could produce. Although it required a lot of concentration so as not to get burned on the hot metal later. I learned that Agni Kai was supposed to be pressed with fire magic until the enemy loses concentration, gets scared and falls. The duel is carried out practically in only pants, so as not to set clothes on fire and barefoot, so that kicks can be used at full power. I had special funny pointed boots made of dragon skin. They carried fire, that is, chakra, although much worse than ninja boots. The power was reduced by 30%, but for other firebenders who do not have such shoes, and this is an unaffordable luxury. So they mostly fought with their upper body, using fire jet, or fireball, something like phoenix flowers. Basically, the range of techniques is limited by skill. It is customary to demonstrate magical power with the help of a tiger roar. This is when three jets of flame come out of the hands and mouth. Their size determined the classification of soldiers and types of troops. Beforehand, for the tiger roar, naturally, it was necessary to practically dance a short combat dance meditation, so this was not used in battle, but purely to show off and understand what pacifying the elements was. This was part of magical training. Some departed from the classical school, that is, they invented their own antics to control the elements. Very cool masters who were in constant meditation seemed to be able to create Zynga control with almost no body movement. Uncle could perform the rare dragon breathing technique, that is, spew fire with his mouth, but, unlike the tiger roar, he could do this without prior kata or preparation. And this was quite unexpected for many, including fire magicians, almost a miracle. There was also a shield of fire from explosions, a wall of fire, a fiery explosion. In general, the arsenal is not bad, and Zuko should theoretically know a lot, but I have so far mastered regular elemental attacks. On Kiyoshi Island, in addition to the snake, there is its own guard, said the darkest of all, 
a half-naked big man with a braid on the back of his head and the same shaved head as Monk. I think the big guy's name was Ogodi or Ogode. Are you talking about the Kyoshi warriors? His bearded comrade with the Yari spear snorted. These are painted women. What kind of warriors are Kyoshi? I asked Monk. Kachi is right about something. Kyoshi warriors are something like warrior priestesses, they are easily recognized by their green clothes and painted faces, the same as Avatar Kyoshi had. It seems like she founded this army on her island to protect her homeland. I haven't seen any pictures of the avatars yet, but I made a note to take a look if I get a chance. I thought that this ant was coloring, invented, most likely, to hide her 230 years. I wonder if she is portrayed in her youth or as a withered old woman with war paint. We reached the village of China. What do you want, people of the Fire Nation? A thin man with a long hanging mustache, like a sad cockroach, greeted us. He was wearing rather rich civilian green clothes and a light cap, like those worn by officials. Said he was some mayor of Tong. Looks like the head of the village. Monk took him aside and they talked. It seems that this mayor Tong has also become a little richer, so he calmly betrayed his own. Kiyoshi is still part of the Earth Kingdom. A shabby little man was assigned as our guide, and he led us along the path to the sea. The tide will be low in an hour, our guide said, pointing to the flat surface of the water. Stay to the western shore of Kiyoshi. Several stones will be exposed there, navigate by them. The ridge is quite wide, you can walk through, the water will be somewhere up to the belly of your animals. You just have to go a little diagonally, as it were. Well, you'll see. Unagi doesn't swim here, for him too small. I guessed that he was talking about the pet monster of Kiyoshi Island. While waiting for the tide to go out, we had a snack. I wanted to ask everything, I said, taking the dried meat from Monk's hands and turning to the colonel. You said that each of you has your own reasons for being here on my side. What are your and your people's reasons? Well, I can say about myself that I was loyal to General Iroh. An excellent commander, Monk chuckled. I believe that the law was broken when your father became the Fire Lord bypassing it. And the order in the army has seriously changed, and not for the better. Well, my guys, who has what? Some lost all their friends when their division was abandoned as fodder for a distraction, others did something else. One Vashir was forced to leave the Yuyang archers, although he was the best. Because it seems like he didn't follow your father's orders. What kind of order? I asked. More information needed to be collected about Ozai. Vashir only spat and, grunting, glared at Monk, and he bared his teeth in answer. Prince Ozai about fifteen years ago called the best archer Yuyan and gave him the task of killing one guy from the city of Hara'a. Hara'a. I asked again. I was still only familiar with the local geography, but I remembered the city Zuko's mother was from very well. Fifteen years ago? You can bet the golden Ryo against the usual one, that Vashir's victim should have been Ursa's ex fiance Iroh said that the city is small, and the time. Yeah, Monk nodded, a small town east of the capital. Vashir went there and sort of drove the guy into the Valley of Oblivion. A terrible place, people cannot survive there. But Prince Ozai considered that Vashir had not completed his task, and ordered him to resign from Yuyang and leave the archers. Besides, Vashir hasn't been very talkative since then, right, Vashir? The gang of rhinoceroses laughed together as if at a good joke, and Vashir opened his mouth, showing me his black palate. It seems that Zuko's father developed a passion for putting undesirable people on fire long before he took the throne. Commander, the water has gone and the ridge is appearing, remarked the bearded man with the Yari spear, and we quickly got ready and saddled the Komodo rhinoceroses. The shore of the island was about a kilometer from the mainland, so we crossed in half an hour. The village of Kiyoshi was located on a plain and was clearly visible from the height of a small pass that we had to overcome. In the center of the village there was a square with a wooden statue of a painted woman with some kind of strange wreath or tiara, similar to a gilded fan. It was clear that the statue had recently been painted, it was bright. Kiyoshi was portrayed as a young woman, not to say an old woman. Although after 30 or 40 no one looks like a peach. Out of 230 years, she should be about 200 in age and 150, a specific old lady. So it's very strange that in memory people, she remained like this. And if we assume that she was like this until her death, then, it seems to me, it could not have happened without some kind of forbidden technique. Moreover, Iryojutsu seems to be available only to some water magicians, in order, 
like our Godem Hokage Tsunade, to maintain youth through medical techniques. There were long livers here. Zuko's grandfather died at 95 and was still considered not very old, but when he's over 200 years old, that's still a bit much. It is curious that she organized a cult for herself. Somehow I'm tormented by the assumption that this war paint is not without reason. It could well be that the cunning ant changed bodies, like my beloved teacher Orochimaru, inhabiting his servants, and paint is needed so that everyone looks the same and no one discovers the forgery. Kiyoshi really stands out among all the avatars. And various cultural and historical references were supplemented and corrected just in the Earth era. Intuition says that all this is not just like that. However, there are more important things to do than solve the mysteries of local antiquity. I propose to lure the avatar out by attacking the village, Monk said. If he's their guest, he'll definitely come running to help. Do you want to try it on your teeth, Colonel? I grinned. He is strong. Let's check it out. I want to watch him and see his weaknesses, I said. I doubt that you'll be able to take it out of the blue, but maybe you're lucky. Let's split up. I'll go around the village and disguise myself so I can see everything, and you will show me what you are capable of. And how will you disguise yourself, Prince Zuko? Asked Monk. HN. If you suddenly see a Kyoshi warrior who uses fire techniques, it will be me. I grinned at the soldiers' half-open mouths. What? Monk examined me meticulously, may work. You're not very big, but the paint will cover your face, they're all the same. They won't even understand anything. What about hair? Probably there are no bald girls there. The soldiers chuckled, holding back their giggles. Well, behind the paint and all the clothes, maybe it won't be so noticeable, or I'll come up with something, I pretended to think. Okay, go ahead, Prince Zuko. Monk nodded, but if anything happens, give some kind of signal so that you don't get caught. General Iroh will rip my head off. I nodded and directed my rhinoceros around the village. Well, let's see what this avatar is. 